Welcome to Montana, everyone. I am in West Yellowstone to be specific, and it kind of came about because of necessity. I am experiencing some issues with a trailer. I have a hot water heater issue. It is not igniting, so I'm going to have to take the trailer in for a warranty repair. So I've been here at the Baker's Hole campground for a couple of days. I have an appointment in a couple more days. So I took the opportunity to get some work done. I edited my last backpacking trip video, which was a five day trip. So it did take some time. I heard a little thunder just now. <laughs> Looks like uh, some thunderstorms are rolling in. If you missed that video, go ahead and check it out. Here, I think, here or here, I can never remember. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah, I, uh, it was an unexpected detour. However, I am a firm believer that everything happens for a reason because some big adventure opportunities have presented themselves and, uh, or at least one. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think it's actually going to be a good little layover. I am going to explore the area over the next day or or so uh, before I have to take the trailer in, which I'm not taking it too far away. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a nice dinner tonight and then tomorrow get on to some exploring. You might recognize this campground because I was here back in May when I came to Yellowstone for my Slough Creek backpacking trip. So it is a familiar place, which is nice. Uh, it is a forest service campground and uh, I was able to drive in and get a first come first serve spot so it's all working out rather nicely just fingers crossed that the repairs will go smoothly as well I've got some chicken tenders I have seasoned up which I will saute along with some veggies and cook up some rice and I usually cook all of the chicken tenders this is obviously much more than I will eat tonight but I will eat the leftovers throughout the next couple of days. Yeah, a lot of folks don't like Brussels sprouts, but I love them, especially if they're seasoned up nicely. In the pan that'll cook the chicken, I'm going to saute it in a little olive oil. And I think the Brussels sprouts I will saute in butter. Got the chicken going and butter is melted. I will be adding the Brussels sprouts. Do you like Brussels sprouts? Let me know. Everything's looking mighty tasty. Full disclosure, I'm cheating on the rice and cooking it in the microwave. All right. This looks so good. Voila, dinner is served. It is raining. The rain had stopped just in time to reveal a gorgeous sunset along the Madison River. It's time for me to once again sing the praises of the sponsor of today's video, AG1 by Athletic Greens. So let me go ahead and sing this song I wrote about them. <laughs> I did not write a song about them and trust me, you don't want me to sing it because you'll just click this video off immediately. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know that I am a huge fan of Athletic Greens. It has become part of my daily routine just as much as brushing my teeth. <laughs> it is something that I do each day for my health and well being and for my immune system. AG1 includes 75 vitamins and minerals crucial for a well functioning nervous system and a fundamental building block of a strong immune system. AG1 is not a restriction, but a healthy addition, replacing the assortment of supplements taking over your cabinet. I drop a couple drops of this vitamin D into my AG1 every morning for an extra added boost of health benefits. 
One scoop or a travel packet, eight ounces of water every day, and that's it. Right now, Athletic Greens is going to give my community an immune supporting free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Once again, I'd like to thank Athletic Greens for sponsoring this video. I would not talk about it if I did not 100% believe in it. Hopefully I have convinced you too to click that link below. Thank you again, Athletic Greens. And now back to the show. Top of the morning to you. <laughs> I slept like a rock last night. I didn't wake up until after 7 a.m. and that is late for me. I'm an early riser. You know, this is not my preferred method of camping. However, when you get closer to the parks, it is definitely harder to find places to boondock. This is a great alternative because it's right along the beautiful Madison River, which actually runs through the park. It's dry camping. They do have uh, several pull-through sites and they do actually have electric sites that are a little more expensive. It's $20 a day to dry camp and I think it's maybe $8 more a day for the electric sites. Um, you know, it's a beautiful scenery. It's very close to the west entrance of the park. It was convenience for me, convenient for me in the situation that I'm in, so it worked out. As you saw, I got a little rain here last night. It was peaceful hearing the sound. It really cooled things off. It's been very warm. It's been in the mid 80s. However, this next uh, coming week, it's supposed to be in the 70s once again, which is nice. The plan for today after I make myself a little breakfast is to do some exploring. There is a lake with an interesting history that I want to visit. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And I also plan on driving into the park. I do have to go into town for uh, a bit just to run a couple of errands. But yeah, the bison are in the rut right now. So it could get interesting inside Yellowstone National Park. Anyhow, let's get this day started. I'm going to make myself a little breakfast sandwich and I'm out of bread so I'm going to use a hamburger bun. It's going to be open faced so I'll just use half of it. Got some bacon cooking up here. It smells so good. I'm going to toast my half a hamburger bun here in the same pan I cooked my bacon in. I was headed north to check out a very interesting lake, but got sidetracked further along the Madison River. Earthquake Lake is located on the Madison River in southwestern Montana. It was created after an earthquake struck on August 17, 1959, with 28 fatalities. Northwest of Yellowstone, Quake Lake is 6 miles in length with a maximum depth of 125 feet. The earthquake measured 7.5 on the Richter magnitude scale and caused an 80 million ton landslide which formed a landslide dam on the Madison River. Oddly enough, this uh, river valley was submerged on August 17th, 1959. Today is August 17th, 2022. The earthquake was the most powerful to hit the state of Montana in historic times. The landslide traveled down the north flank of Sheep Mountain at an estimated 100 miles per hour, killing 28 people who were camping along the shores of Hebgen Lake and downstream along the Madison River. Be 
being from Southern California, I am very familiar with earthquakes. I lived through the 1994 Northridge earthquake. So all that information hit very close to home. I know people that lost property and just hearing the recount of the stories in the film that they offer uh, for viewing at the visitor center was pretty heart wrenching. You should definitely watch that film if you visit the area and if you visit Earthquake Lake. Anyhow, I think it is time to make my way into the park. I opted to take a scenic loop back to West Yellowstone, which took me through the charming town of Ennis, Montana. Okay, so I came into the park the other day and there were no bison around and apparently they are making their way over to both the Lamar and uh, Hayden Valleys. However, the Lamar Valley is still closed because of the flooding, so I will be making my way over to Hayden Valley to see if I can find some bison or any type of wildlife, maybe even grizzlies. I'm assuming there's some sort of wildlife ahead because we are moving very slow. I do need to make a correction because when I did come through the other day, I did see one injured bison. He had an injured leg and he was in this area. So he could still be here. I'm not sure. I would imagine that uh, he is ripe for target for other predators being that he can't really move, unfortunately. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if that's what everybody's stopping for. The bison is right in front of these cars, so they can't get around it. So I'm about to drive around it now. Uh-oh. It's like walking right in front of this land cruiser. There he is. Yikes. It's coming right my way, so I'm going to uh, roll up my window. walking down, right down the middle of the road. Woo! Came right by my car. Luckily he didn't decide to get into a battle with my truck.
shining and it's pouring. That was pretty awesome. I think I was more excited to see the bald eagles than I was a bison, but it was very cool to see them both in one spot. Weather is taking a bit of a turn. Now we have hail. I see it bouncing off my head. Okay, well I just saw a huge bolt of lightning and I don't know where it struck down, but it hit not too far from here. So I am going to start making my way back to camp. Yeah, it's looking a little ominous out here. sign as you enter my campground. I'm back here at camp safe and sound. No lightning incidents. I did see some elk on the side of the road on my way back out of the park which was very cool. They looked young and one of them was really playful and kicking around but uh, they were on the roadside. I couldn't really stop. I was just trying to film while I was stopped in traffic anyways but they're just beautiful to see. It was a beautiful day in the park. I did get to see bison, the elk, and then two bald eagles, which was really cool. The weather moved in and it's looking pretty ominous still outside. Got here to camp and uh, got my truck lined up and you know, ready to hitch up in the morning and already starting to put a few things away. I did, uh, discover that the cap on my truck one side is not unlocking unfortunately so i've tried everything and i can't get it to unlock so it looks like something that i'll also be doing tomorrow is going by a locksmith i'll be uh getting everything all packed up and you know heading to a major city tomorrow to take care of these things and little things like this happen all the time i don't always share them on the channel the um, heavy duty hitch that i have for my tongue luckily this did not happen while it was attached to the tongue but i do lock it and keep it all in one piece when i'm in transport and the locking mechanism got stuck in there and they had to send me a new one my backup truck uh, camera monitor failed and malfunctioned and I had to get a new one sent to me. You know, these little things happen <laughs> all the time and it's things that I have to deal with. And this video might not be a big adventure. You know, sometimes there's big adventures and sometimes there is just taking care of life and I'm really living out here and there's always things to be done. <laughs> I do have some epic adventures coming up and uh, as always, I appreciate you guys hanging with me. I appreciate your support. I love you all and uh, stick with me because we'll uh, be going on some more awesome adventures very soon. I will see you on the next one. See you soon, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. I came to this place and they are going to hook me up and get me all fixed up. We at least got the tailgate down and we know what the problem is. So, whew.